Hey guys, thanks for hanging around today. Got a real treat for you. Jerry Watts first pitched this idea a couple of years ago. We couldn't make it happen. But I'm just extremely thrilled to present this big band clinic. John Diversa, big band. John, thank you for sharing your art with us. This is going to be special. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, all the wonderful musicians. Let's crank it up. John Diversa, big band, starring Jerry Watts.
past She kaleidoscopes and fired us So inclusive, a stream of dreams And lucid, albeit fleeting moments of bleeding panic Ecstatic, ecstasy, emphatic The next to be stand Loved ones will pass on the return from that song I can build cities with the brands It makes sense of the cosmic process What pretense let us off easy in the dream state But you wouldn't believe me So which reality is real? A policy of fallacy, formality, volunteers in a blaze. All truth becomes deja vu, and then we are poor and try to restore it. Waking moments of lethargy, see the astral plane is message me. What can the message mean as long as it reflects next life to projectiles and not in this dead context? Truly intuitive, extreme like a boom ring, bringing in the troubles of the day and it's soothing to the ring the conscious coward. Scouring the galaxy with the newly empowered. Every great idea exists in the ether, eclipse in the far, trips in the research. A word to the wise is the word that I learned to read. For eternity, when's the last time someone tried to show you the intrinsic value of how you go about the signal knowledge? Solid is time yourself beside the shop, but that's tends to be a jolly old soul that sees me around the world and back to tell about it. Tell it us garbage in, garbage out, blend society is wise as you can see as far as I can be the tension. Listen, a coalition of dates and times, sites and flights, hotels, thousands of houses, and cities, and didn't see countries and continents and compliments from strangers. Soon to be a joke of patriots, all the brothers and the others in the place we hit the air with the scenarios invited in to share with us the tales of the seven seas and the day of reckoning. In the sins, in the sense, don't promote the token, spoke the word and broke the fence and blurred the fence and down and heard the sound of silence. Channel flattery had to be out of it. Criticism and compliments of the same, but wisdom and common sense of the blame for the one who makes the comment. There's only coming from this program, which is like an old man, which is like the snow and only hope. Reaction, attraction, and back to the crack of dawn. The genesis of witness is relevant. I bet you have a hell of a time selling it. Made the captivity, explain the proclivity, the hibernation, and by the name, the doctor named the knowledge paraded in our arena. Treats of objectivity, abject poverty, double and destiny.
Hey, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to our party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, so uh, I just want to uh, reintroduce you to John Diversa, who's writing all this incredible music. <laughs> We're going to uh, continue right now and play another tune, and then we'll, we'll kind of break out and, and chat for a little bit. I did want to mention that's Gene Coy on the drums. Yeah. 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 And the, uh, the remarkable Katise Buckingham. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we'll, we'll hear a little bit more from him uh, later on. And of course, this incredible, <clears throat> incredible band. Yeah. Yeah.
Guesses while we're doing this. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, welcome. Um, you know, uh, first off, I just want to say thanks to Chris GC for uh, sticking his neck out and uh, uh, inviting us to do this. Uh, it was, you know, I just sent him one track of John's, and he just kind of signed on for it. And it was, that's really cool. And uh, yeah, yeah, right on, Chris. Uh, yeah, and, and while I'm at it, you know, so Chris, so, um, I mean, you're probably all aware of this, but Chris has transcribed, I don't know, everybody in the whole world uh, for Bass Player Magazine. For, uh, yeah, not in 10A yet, but, but we could do that on that too, actually. 
Yeah, and it's a thank you, man. That's just been, a, been an incredible I have thing. words to say. Take that machine. Sorry, I oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, uh, Big Band, right? Why Big Band? Well, um, why? Uh, the reason why, my why is different than these guys, right? <laughs> uh, because uh, I, I need to learn how to read. So any, any bass players in here that need to work on their reading, maybe? All right, yeah. So it's a really common thing, uh, particularly for electric bass players, to not know how to read and play fantastic. So I started, um, you know, I just started really young, just trying to figure out, you know, well, how can I, where, <laughs> where do people read music, you know? And, um, and I, found, I found it in big bands. And you know, I was thinking my earliest memory of it um, was a, uh, um, now I was uh, from the East Coast, and we we had this I went to a concert where Maynard Ferguson played, and this guy with blonde hair came in and subbed on, on the band. It turned out to be Will Lee. I figured out years later, but I just suddenly it went from being something that seemed really drab to this guy just kind of lit it up, as you as you know, <laughs> he can do, and that you know kind of it kind of stuck in my mind, you know, and and probably as far as electric bass goes, my ex favorite thing or the next thing that really impacted me was seeing Jaco Pastorius in that big band. So I don't know if any of you had the pleasure to see that. I saw that at, um, at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Uh, I think they played, might even play a couple nights, but it was, it was pretty crazy. And Peter Erskine and, and uh, Bob Mincer and all those guys. And it was, it was, really, it was really something. And um, I, however, discovered I lacked the capacity to write as good as Jaco Pastorius. So uh, that's where John Diversa comes in. <laughs> um, and um, you know, speaking of reading, I should that's a that's a very bad segue into my little uh, plug. This con this uh, this event is sponsored by a Los Angeles Music Academy. And, yeah, and uh, I run the, the bass department there. And uh, it's uh, it, you know we have a, just so you know we have a year and a half AA degree program. That's right. You can learn. Tim Tim is going to come and learn tapping. Oh, Andrews. I'm out. Um, yeah. And they were very generous to sponsor, so they paid for this whole band to be here, which I think is pretty, is pretty darn cool. Uh, that's more money than we've made in a year of gigs. I'm mean, just saying. Just saying. So, uh, 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 yes. And so, um, if you're interested to find out more, you can always check the website we're at in Pasadena. Feel free to, you know, come by and we'll, we'll give you a tour around. Scott is right there, and he's in, in admissions, and, and uh, he's the man. He also went through the school, so he has a, a good perspective on it. And uh, what I like about it is it's a, it's a small place that, that um, is very focused, and you get a lot of attention. So I know how all the base guys are doing, and we have cool, um, cool people come, like Mike, Mike Merritt and Tim LaFave and, and, and whoever else is here I can't see. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so we've been we've been doing this for a little over five years now. We play the last Sunday of every month at the Big Potato. Uh, so this whole band fits in the Big Potato somehow magically, and uh, yeah, it's it's been great. And you know what? What's so great? And and Chris got this right away uh, yesterday. We said I told him well, we've been doing this for five years, and he said, man, that's just doing anything for five years. You know, in the music business, while you're trying to make everything else happen, is really kind of rare. So. So uh, we're, I'm really grateful uh, for this opportunity. It's been pretty remarkable. And John called me, you know, and said, "Well, do you want? I'm going to do this big band." And I was like, "Yeah, no," uh, because because yeah, I just wasn't I wasn't into it. And, and you know, and I had to kind of open my mind, um, uh, you know, which you, we all have to do periodically, uh, to um, the the possibility that it could be a different experience than you know I had some negative experiences uh, before and. Uh, and this just turned out to be really incredible. And um, particularly, I, I, I like it because it reminds me uh, of something uh, that I that I uh, that I saw when I was um, when I was first starting out. You know, I uh, I went to William Patterson uh, University, and uh, in those days, uh, Fat Jones and, and Mel Lewis ran the jazz department there. And so we used to go Monday nights and see those guys play at the Village Vanguard. And and I was always so impressed with how that band could be. Just the writing was amazing, and it just could be screaming. And then it would break down, and it would be so intimate, and like a small jazz group, and really, you know, the improv, it was, it was, it was pretty crazy, and it really impacted me. And for me, uh, playing electric bass, uh, I just found a really cool, um, 
kind of way to begin to explore that while, while, not, while not playing it by bass, quite honestly. And to do it in a more electronic kind of a way and in a groove kind of a way. So John, you're, you're, we're going to play some more in just a little bit so you hear uh, more of his incredible uh, compositions. So, so um, you know, that's kind of the, the, the way that, um, you know, this all evolved. Uh, uh, also, I got to meet uh, Andrew Sinewick and, and Gene Coy. Gene! Okay. Who is, um, you know, uh, just a remark, I mean, he's the most remarkable guy I, I, I know. I, I, don't, I don't think that I have ever met anyone who can reinvent things as many times, you know, really, I mean, in an improvisational sense. I mean, it's just so remarkable, and his ability to listen and play is uh, astounding. Um, yeah. It's just, it's just incredible. And then, and then, you know, I'm just kind of standing in front of all these remarkable musicians who um, let me play with them. So, um, you know, these folks, uh, you know, they're pretty bad, <laughs> you know. So, so um, uh, you know, the experience of being in rehearsal with John and watching him rehearse and just listening to all these people who do movie soundtracks and theater gigs and, and everything that you can think of and probably the, the opera, right, and I don't know, everything that I can do. But hearing them talk about music, you know, just just by just by being present and keeping my, my ears open, man, I, I, it's just I've just grown so much. Hey, thank you, you guys. But but you know, it's, I mean, it's really uh, pretty incredible. And and we recorded um, uh, our first album. Uh, it came out last year, and um, uh, you know, we had an incredible uh, time in the studio. That was, um, um, and, you know, the the record sounds great. And uh, and I, uh, you know, you, you you always like to say, yeah, and I, I rock. I was amazing, and I, you know, I had some, I, I learned some things. I struggled, and I watched these guys who are consummate um, recording musicians. I mean, it's 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 different when you're in the rhythm section, you know, and that's your, that's your world, you know. It was it was really something. So I really, you know, again, I just I just went into the opportunity, and really grew from it. It was it was it was pretty cool. So um, we have uh, we have some more music to play. And I, so I want to kind of turn it over to John to, to say some things. But first, um, are there any questions or any guesses on time signatures? I have a question because the first thing I saw was that you were shooting music. And I wondered how much of an influence was that on your music? Yeah, um, so the question is how much of that is written out, and it's, it's, it's a lot of it is notated. And that first song is the hairiest song of all time, of all history, <laughs> for like your bass, for me, <laughs> in my history. Um, yeah, so, and, and so it's nine pages long, and so that's either four stands, or you're ripping it off. And, it, and actually, the big potato, there's, a, there's space for one stand, so you're kind of, so I break it down into two page increments and throw it over my shoulder. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, and that one in particular, you know, um, um, there's a, a really great a drummer who's a great friend of mine named Ralph Humphrey, who played with Frank Zappa and did all these amazing things. And he's a consummate studio musician, and he uh, subs sometimes and, uh, on this band. And, and he said, reading that particular piece of music, it's like, it's like reading for the first time every time you play it. So it's this remarkable composition, but, and I kind of have, he kind of named it, and I was like, Oh, that, yeah, right. That, why, because, because after you know, doing it a few times, you think, oh, man, I, I can get this. I got this. I'm looking away. And I looked away. I looked away in the, in the grooving uh, section when Catisse was rapping. And there's a, there's a sequence that's two bars and a, and a bar, uh, uh, two bars of four and bar of two, that, and it flips around, and it's a half step away. So if you get off, lots of luck to you. So I kind of I had to... <laughs> It's, it's true, you know. So I'm trying to like, you know, relax. Have to, hey, let's have some fun. And and in the midst, of, yeah. And it's so it's yeah. So it's it's this funny kind of, um, you know, paying. It's for me, for my job and my role is paying attention to what's going on um, on the page and then being loose because John, on the other hand, writes all those things, but it encourages us to, you know, particularly in the rhythm section, to kind of stretch it and find new things. And so the jazz part of it is way, way, way in there conceptually. He, and and, and uh, maybe you want to say some stuff about that? No? I'm sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. yeah. No. Guys, I mean, you're really hanging on the back side of the beat a lot. And, every, I mean, a lot of this, everybody in the band sort of takes turns doing it. I mean, has it ever become like a battle? Like, how far back can I hang? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> okay, the trumpet, wait, wait, I can tell what the trumpet players on this. They're saying yes. <laughs> At times. 
And, and by the way, everybody, so feel free to, to grab a mic and, and chime in, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 so that, that's a great question. And yeah, and, it, and it's tricky, so we're finding it. And so, you know, uh, part of what's going on is that John is, is uh, you know, has written this very specific stuff that's really hard that you, you have to be completely present to do and at the same time has allowed kind of an atmosphere where, you know, that can happen. And, and it, maybe it doesn't go so well on a particular night or we mess with the time and, and and Gene is an instigator, of course. Uh, <laughs> just saying. Uh, but, 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 but you know, um, you know. So it, maybe it, not, it won't go so so well, and that and that has to be okay. So it's this it's this combination of very specific things and 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 this 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 way of thinking about it that that it's okay, you know, if you miss it because we're looking we're looking for something new and a new interpretation. You know, and after five years of playing some of the same things. And we're, Anybody else? Yeah. Just out of curiosity, do you ever look at the other bass player instruments you have been playing? I try to stay away from them as much as possible. <laughs> now, I, now, again, a, a great question. Yeah, so so I'm right next to George Thatcher, who's playing the uh, uh, bass trombone. And, you know, we have, there you go. Um, and we have some unison lines. Like in, the, in that first song, there, there's a, when it goes to 6 8, we, we do some things together with all the trombones. But I absolutely do. And, and you know, so it's interesting. So, uh, you know, a, as you know, as an electric bass guy uh, or a bass player, very often what you're asked to do is just read a chord chart and go, funky, hip hop, go, you know, whatever, swing, or, you know, summer breezy. Yourself, you know, but but in comparison with the world where where everything is where everything is 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 dictated and there's all this information about the you know the way that you're going to play the note the architecture of the note the the et cetera et cetera, et cetera the phrasing all that stuff um, I um, have just tried to keep my ears open to the way that these guys are doing things because you know I, I, just, I probably everybody here took privates and was all state and was a genius, you know, labeled a genius at 11 or something. I was, that was not me. I got a bass. I went to the garage, and here we go, you know. So, yeah, so that's a different, it's a different, it's a different thing. So, um, yeah, I've really, I've really learned a lot just by listening, and, and there's always more to go, you know. It's just the, the it's just, there's just always more to know about this stuff. John, did you care to say anything? Sure. <laughs> uh, All that is true. Okay. Well, I'm doing that. I'm doing good. The boss is happy. Uh, all right. Well, what, I'll tell you what. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we play another tune? Here? All right. Cool. All right. This is called Cheeks. Almost there. <laughs> Gerald Watts Jr. on the bass. <laughs> Thank you. 
Driscoll on the alto saxophone.
Okay, yeah. Okay, well, I think we, we, have time. we have time for one more. You want to hear one more? Yeah. Oh, me too. All right, yeah, so, um, so a couple things. So uh, at, at, towards the end of the flute solo, we meant to speed up, but earlier we didn't mean to speed up. I blame the bass player for that, but it's just a little disclaimer. Uh, you know, um, we're going to uh, close with the title track uh, to the album, which is called Junk Wagon, right? Uh, before we do, uh, so first, any any further questions? All right, all right. Uh, any answers? Yeah, right. We need some answers. I need some answers. How about a thank you for bringing you guys here? I've been here five years and I've never heard. Okay, so uh, I did thank you at the beginning. Of the thank you. Uh, let's thank Chris GC just for being Chris GC first. And for, uh, and, you know, I've been to these a lot, and uh, it's nice to um, represent with some music. Uh, I'm so uh, excited to get to, to come and play with people that are my friends, and uh, that, that means a lot to me, personally, you know. And um, uh, just just to say, uh, you know, this is just a, an incredible person, as you've probably discovered <laughs> over the last few minutes. Um, so an incredible composer and arranger and uh, horn player and a remarkable human, uh, John DeVerso. So John, thank you. And John uh, is going to introduce this whole group to you, and then we're going to uh, hit our last tune. Cool? All right. I only knew their names. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jeff Lynn. I'd be happy to introduce all of these friends. Uh, it really is a collection of family and friends, this group. You know, we, and that's the great thing about getting to write for this group because. Uh, if everybody in this group is their own unique personality, and can you imagine what a thrill it is to get to write for all these personalities? Uh, so, that's Tom Peterson on the tennis saxophone. He drove all the way out here from Thousand Oaks. That's Tom Peterson on the saxophone, just to play for you. All the way from, from the land of the uplands. Matt Zebley, on the clarinet, alto saxophone. On lead alto saxophone, that's Jeff Driscoll. On tenor saxophone, flew John Yoakum. Nancy Newman on the bass clarinet, baritone saxophone. She did take private lead, I believe. Did you take private lessons? Boom. Paul Young on the trombone, right there. Alex Isles has a session right after this, so we gotta play this really fast. That's Alex Isles on the trombone. Here at the beginning. <laughs> Charlie Morillas on the trombone. And on bass trombone, that's George Thatcher. Is there one of these events for bass trombone? I hope so. Oh, man. That's Glenda Smith on the trumpet. Our leader in the back row, Ron King on the trumpet. Bijan Watson on the trumpet. Sometimes Bijan lays back on the, on the time as well. Mm. That's Jonathan Bradley on the trumpet. Uh, and, and one of the really uh, huge glue factors of this band, he always seems to find the right part to glue the horns and the rhythm section together. Uh, and it's wonderfully improvised and also uh, it's, it's the sounds, it's what he plays, it's the textures. Andrew Sinewick on the guitar. It's true. On the drums, that's Gene Coy. And uh, a huge thanks to our bass player uh, who has brought us here today. And, uh, well, come on, Jerry Watts.
So without further ado, we're going to play this tune. It's called Junk Wagon. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today.
Sinnoh, ich habe Gitarre.
Jerry Watts. Again, the staff is paying John the first season. Love is in the family, and good night.